hello and welcome to another video with the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible Study Video Channel. Today on this video, I am led by the Holy Spirit to talk about envy and jealousy in the kingdom of God. That is the Captain's Voice series Bible study for today. As we take a look at two individuals who were part of God's kingdom, and the one individual was extremely jealous of the other one it had no reason to be because the one that well the two individuals is Saul and David okay and so Saul had he was very jealous of David and he had no reason to really be jealous of David because what David was doing was going to be for him it was going to benefit him in the long run anyway <laughs> because he was against the enemies of the Lord okay and if you were a part of the kingdom of God and if someone is uh, a part of the, uh, you know, fighting enemies off that are coming up against the kingdom of God, it benefits you because you're a part of the kingdom of God. And so Saul actually got jealous because David could fight off more enemies than he could and went to battle and um, was able to get victory. But he did it based on the fact that he was always obedient to God. And that was the difference between David and Saul. Saul was disobedient to God and with his previous uh, fight or uh, I should say war that he went into against the Philistines he did something that God told him not to do and that was to take the merchandise of the Philistines the enemies or not the Philistines they were the Amalekites and um, so therefore he was disobedient to God well that's something David would never have done okay because he he was just not built like that and so therefore uh, Saul did that, and whenever he saw David, you know, gaining accolade because of the victories that he won, he became jealous. And it tells us that here in the book of 1 Samuel, uh, chapter 18, and I'm just going to key in on the verses 28 and 29, where it says, And Saul saw and knew that the Lord was with David. Now, Michelle, which was Saul's daughter, loved David, okay? And Saul was yet the more afraid of David. And Saul became David's enemy continually. So here we see, because Saul was afraid of the fact that David had the power and the anointing of God with him. And, he, and the reason why he had it with him is because he was doing right by God. Okay, he was in walking in obedience. You don't get the glory of God and walk in disobedience. No, you can't have that. You won't walk with the glory of God upon you and upon your life if you're walking in disobedience to the kingdom. And so, and that's what happened with Saul. He lost the glory of God. He lost his position as a king over Israel also, whenever God had desired for him to be the king at one point in time, but he decided to do what he wanted to do with the kingdom. And that's what you don't do because the kingdom is not yours. The kingdom is God's. And whenever you put your hands on God's kingdom, God you know that makes that becomes a problem between you and God or if you're doing what you want to do with God's kingdom that becomes a problem with you the individual and God because the kingdom is God's God's saints are his everything that he gives to his saints are his and the saints and so um, just as the story with Jezebel and her husband whenever they touched the field that belonged to Naboth it belonged to the, originally it belonged to the kingdom of God, okay? That's why it was distributed to individuals in the kingdom. And so, therefore, when it was distributed to Naboth, and Jehu had a problem with it, uh, not Jehu, but um, Ahab had a problem with it, then Jezebel decided to rearrange things. That's what... That's what that Jezebel spirit uh, really consists of, trying to rearrange things in the kingdom. When you have no authority, you have no, you know, God hasn't given you that authority or permission to do. And then you take it and do what you want to do with it. That's not what God desires in the earth. We are under his authority and we reign and we uh, rule through his presence and through by his Holy Ghost, through by his glory and through by his presence. We don't rule his presence. His presence rules and reigns through us. And so David was well aware of that and uh, saw at some point in time had let that get by him and he began to develop uh, envy and jealousy 
for uh, David and then began to seek his own life. And the story we're going to tap into, and this is just uh, going into just a little bit regarding the uh, incident between those two. And that's going to be in 1 Samuel chapter 20. And it starts off with David fled from Naoth and Ramah and came and said before Jonathan, What have I done? What is my iniquity? And what is my sin before your father? That he seeks my life. Okay, so here we see in this verse, David is asking Jonathan, who is the son of Saul, because Jonathan and David became friends. They became so close, and we're going to read this in the story. They were like brothers. Um, they were more like father and son than Jonathan and his own father, Saul, because of the envy and the jealousy that he had in his heart. Uh, he was unable to get close to him. And, and Jonathan could see that how his dad Saul felt about David was wrong. He knew that he was wrong and what he was doing and how he was treating him. And he didn't like it, but he still went on to help David and uh, be a friend to him. So let me get back into the story. Verse 2 says, As he said unto him, God forbid, thou shalt not die. Behold, my father will do nothing, either great or small, but that he will show it to me. And why should my father hide this thing from me? It is not so. And David swore, moreover, and said, Thy father certainly knows that I have found grace in thine eyes. And he said, Let not, thy, let not Jonathan know this, lest he be grieved. But truly as the Lord lives, and as thy soul lives, there is but a step between me and death. David began to fear for his life. Because this man, Saul, was um, extremely, I mean, he was so envious of him and he that to the point that he wanted to kill him he was seeking after him and so he became David became afraid and then it says here that uh, then said Jonathan who was the son again of Saul Jonathan said unto David whatsoever thy soul desires I will even do it for you and David said unto Jonathan behold tomorrow is the new moon and I should not fail to sit with the king at meat but let me go that I may hide myself in the field unto the third day at evening. And thy father at all miss me, then say, David earnestly had asked leave of me that he might run to Bethlehem, his city, for there is a yearly sacrifice there for all the family. So here David is wanting to, and he's telling Jonathan this too, so that he can report it back to his dad, that he's getting ready to leave and go back to the city where his family is because of a certain type of um, sacrifice, family gathering that they would have every year. And so David is telling Jonathan, I'm going to go back to that instead of going to this uh, celebration that they're going to have with the kings. And so he's telling Jonathan that so that he can inform his dad that's the reason why you won't see him there. So he says, if you say thus, it is well, thy servant shall have peace, but if he be very angry, then be sure that evil is determined by it. So therefore thou shalt deal kindly with thy servant, for thou hast brought thy servant into a covenant of the Lord with you. Notwithstanding, if there be in, in me iniquity, slay thyself, slay me thyself, for why shouldest thou bring me to thy father? And Jonathan said, Far be it from me, for I knew certainly that evil were determined by my father to come upon you. Then would I not tell you. So he's Jonathan is letting David uh, be assured of the fact that he is his friend. And whatever his dad tells him that he wants to do to him, he will warn him so that he can get away from it all. And so uh, David said to John, to, uh, then said David to Jonathan, Who shall tell me? Or what if thy father answers you roughly? Jonathan, and then Jonathan says to him, Come and let us go out into the field. And they went out, both of them, into the field. And Jonathan said unto David, O Lord God of Israel, when I have sounded my father about tomorrow, about any time, or the third day, and behold, if there be good toward David, and I then send not unto you, and show it to you, the Lord do so and much more to Jonathan. But if it please my father to do you evil, then I will show it to you. And then... Uh, send you away that thou mayest go in peace and that the Lord be with you as he has been with my father 
So Dave, uh, Jonathan just is wanting to uh, assure David more and more that whatever his father is telling him that he's going to do, he's definitely going to let him know about everything. And again, we're, we're here in First uh, Samuel chapter 20, and I'm going to begin to start skipping around verses because this is a lengthy chapter. And he says, um, And thou shalt not only while yet I live show me the kindness of the Lord that I die not, but also thou shalt not cut off the kindness from my house forever. No, not when the Lord has cut off the enemies of David, every one from the face of the earth. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, Let the Lord even require it at the hand of David's enemies. More assurance, just continually assuring David of his loyalty that he has to him, basically. And David and uh, Jonathan calls David to swear again because he loved him, for he loved him as he loved his own son his own soul I'm sorry <laughs> I say son because it seems like they had more of a relationship as father and son than did Saul and David and we're going to get over here I'm going to skip over and go over some verses so we can get to the good part but we're just laying the foundation of where David is deciding to leave because they're having a king banquet like and he's letting uh, Jonathan know that he's leaving so that he can go back and report it to his father Saul because Saul is going to be at that banquet and he's going to be angry that David's not there. So I'm skipping over to verse 26. And so it says, um, no, verse 25. And the king sat upon his seat as at all other times, even upon a seat by the wall. And Jonathan arose and Abner sat by Saul's side and David's place was empty. Nevertheless, Saul spoke not anything, for he thought something had, you know, befallen him, so he is not clean. Surely he is not clean. And it came to pass on the morrow, which was the second day of the month, that David's place was empty again. And Saul said to Jonathan, his son, where is David, basically? Okay, where is the son of Jesse? Why isn't he here? And Jonathan answered him and said, Saul... I said, David earnestly asked to leave and go to Bethlehem because of the family reunion, sort of like sacrifice that they were having. And then Saul's anger, I'm skipping verses because I'm in verse 30, it says, Saul's anger was kindled against Jonathan because he told him that. And he said unto him, Thou son of the perverse, rebellious woman, do not I know that thou hast chosen the son of Jesse to thine own confusion and unto the confusion of thy mother's nakedness? For as long as the son of Jesse lives upon the ground, thou shalt not be established, nor thy kingdom. Wherefore now send and fetch him unto me, for he shall surely die. And Jonathan answered Saul his father, and said unto him, Wherefore shall he be slain? What has he done? Okay, so that question comes about again. What has he done? Because Saul hasn't, David hadn't did anything to Saul. But as you can see here, his own dad cursed him because of the goodness and the loyalty that Jonathan had toward David and knowing that David hadn't done anything wrong to his father and wanting to just be loyal to him. So then uh, going on, uh, where are we at? Verse 33. Now this is the real scary part. Saul cast a javelin at, his, at him and to smite him, and whereby Jonathan knew that it was determined by his father to slay David so Jonathan arose from the table in fierce anger, okay, and he and did eat no meat the second day of the month, where he was grieved for David because his father had done him shame. So here, verse 33 says, Saul threw a javelin at him to smite. He threw something at his own son to kill him. That's how bitter, angry, and evil, and um, oh my God, that spirit, envy, and jealousy can have a person in such a rage that he began to attack his own son because he was for David, okay? And he knew that David was a good man. He hadn't done anything wrong to Saul. And Saul was wrong in the fact that he was against him and trying to slay him and wanting to kill him. He had no reason to be doing that. It was only for the reason of the heart that he had because he was envious and jealous of David. Okay, now, um, just wanted to bring this into the video regarding the kingdom because the Holy Spirit led me into it. 
and it is in reference to the fact that Jesus Christ, or no, well, the God of heaven, I should say, because Jesus Christ being the son, but God also refers to himself as a jealous God, okay, and we can see that in Exodus 34 and 14, and also in Deuteronomy 4 and 24, God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. He gets so jealous that he doesn't want us to have any other God before us. Now, that is the only time the spirit of jealousy is used by God. We want to make sure we understand and uh, that and are very clear on that. He's only jealous whenever an individual decides to serve or to make anything else a God other than him. That's when the spirit of jealousy kicks in. And at that particular point, as we look at that story in 1 Samuel chapter 20, we can see that Saul has made pride a God, okay? And in him doing that, because, and jealousy, and envy, any all these things that he's, he is experiencing and he is acting upon, and he is uh, basically changing his behavior to follow after because he's only after David he's only seeking David's life because of the jealousy and the envy in his heart if he wasn't following that okay because I just want us to get make sure we understand this help us Holy Ghost because it's just like following Jesus Christ we follow love but he's following the envy he's following the jealousy that's the spirit that he's following and that's why he was after Saul okay just want us to make us clear, help us to understand the clarity of this. And so, therefore, he has made that a God within his own being. Okay? Because, again, he's following it. He's letting it lead him. He's letting it guide him. He's letting it be the, the, the dominating, determining factor and focus of his vessel, of his being, of his character, of his uh, everything. His behavior is, is coming, is focused on that particular thing, okay? And that's what I'm trying to express in this video to help us to understand how God does not want us to be in a relationship with anything other than Him, which is His love, which is love, and to walk in nothing but that and to make sure that we are not allowing anything other than that to be in our hearts, okay? All right, so that is going to definitely bring me to the conclusion of this video entitled Envy, Je Envy and Jealousy in the Kingdom of God. Taking a look at an example of that, okay? That's what this is, an example of it, so that we can, when we identify it, we can root it out. We can cast it out in the mighty name of Christ Jesus. All right, so we have to definitely petition heaven in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your revelation. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your mighty, powerful Holy Ghost. You, 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 you. Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask in the mighty name of Christ Jesus for more of your insight into your word and into what you would have the kingdom to be doing in this hour and in this season. And any individual operate in operating in the kingdom with the spirit of envy and jealousy. We have Heavenly Father, we ask that you pull it out right now. Remove it in the mighty name of Christ Jesus. By the power of the blood of Jesus Christ right now, Heavenly Father, move it. Remove it, remove it. Send down your anointing mightily or rise it up within that individual in Jesus Christ's mighty name and remove that out of their heart. Amen. And we thank you for it, Heavenly Father, in Jesus Christ's mighty name. All right, so I will see you as we continue to go forward on the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible Study video channel. I'll see you on our next video. God bless you.